Yo, 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 good morning. What up? Grateful for another maggot-free day above the dirt. Jersey Shore, check it out. And also check out this very cool Zen rock garden that somebody took a lot of time to, to, uh, to make. It's such a cool thing to see. Uh, sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I started this video uh, well, just after I stopped running. So uh, anyway, the last video was on the near enemies. And I mentioned in that, you know, talking about, look at that beautiful view about um, enlightenment. And really, if you didn't see the near enemies video, um, or you did, go back to it and check it out again with um, kind of the mindset that it's talking about enlightenment, even though it's not. Uh, I didn't specify that. Because really, articulating the difference between the Brahma Viharas, the four mind states that reflect enlightenment, and the near enemies, which are similar experiences, um, but they're enemies because they're actually unhealthy, rooted in ignorance and delusion, and they're not enlightened mind states, but they can feel like them. So it's really a pretty tangible um, definition of enlightenment, the difference between uh, the Bra Brahma, uh, Brahma Viharas and the... Um, near enemies. Especially if you look at enlightenment as something we do rather than some like experience um, that not only happens to us but somehow permanently changes us. And, and I'll get more into that later. Of course it permanently changes us but it doesn't um, keep us from our, our, our humanness. And it doesn't keep us from feeling. And it doesn't keep us from having difficulties in life. And it doesn't keep us um, from any um, of the things that we don't want to face or engage. So the, the, it's a, a real um, mistake and delusion to think that enlightenment is some final point that, there's an, that it's over. We don't have to work at this anymore and um, nothing could be farther from the truth but i'll get more into that in future videos right now i wanted to talk about um a teaching that it's a good segue into from uh you know the near enemies and um, it's a teaching that says um, things are not as they seem nor are they otherwise to be attached to things is delusion to encounter the absolute is not yet enlightenment. So that, that's the first part of it. Um, and that's what I'm going to key in on. Um, especially the first line. The first line that says things are not as they seem nor are they otherwise. Really almost the definition of enlightenment and practice in one line. Because enlightenment is not being attached to things, that's illusion. Enlightenment is not um, experiencing the absolute and getting stuck there. That's not enlightenment. Enlightenment is past that where we balance both those, the relative and the absolute, into experience and, um, and have an equanimity with both of them. So um, the relative is the material world and what we experience. The absolute is ultimate truth. And they both can exist simultaneously, even though um, one is saying this exists and one is saying this doesn't exist. And an example I gave when I talked about emptiness, and that's what this is about too, emptiness, is a fist. Now, a fist is just a label. What it is is a closed hand that because of a neurological um, firing, we told our, sent uh, down the nervous system uh, to our hand for the fingers to fold and close. Now, we've given that a label and, it, and we all know what a fist is and what it means and we have a reaction to it. 
when someone makes a fist, right? It could be cheering or it could be threatening, right? But the fist doesn't exist without the conditions that make it, right? So ultimately, all the constructs and labels we live by don't exist separately, fixed, and, and independent. Everything is interdependent and dependent on the conditions that give it uh, the ability to rise and create, right? So here's a fist. It exists, but ultimately it doesn't because it's just an idea that we give meaning to. And, you know, when we can start to live our life like that, see that we're really not separate from anything, that everything we experience is like this. In a relative sense, um, they exist. In an ultimate sense, they don't, right? Nothing permanent and fixed and inherent about anything. And the conditions change. What we think is fixed and permanent changes. So when it says things are not as they seem, nor are they otherwise, well, this doesn't exist permanently. It doesn't really exist at all. But when it's here, um, nor is it otherwise, right? It's not as it seems, but nor is it otherwise. So... Um, you know, when we can live our life like that um, and see that things are not as they seem, nor are they otherwise, it lets us deal with them without um, being attached and, um, and without suffering over that attachment, without pursuing and avoiding to find some artificial security um, or comfortability, right? The comfortability comes from realizing um, this is the way it is, and eventually it won't be the way it is. So enlightenment is, is, this is a huge part of enlightenment. Seeing, clearly seeing through, through delusion and the illusion it creates outside ourselves in terms of our perspective on life, our, our place in it, and how we respond. So um, I hope that was helpful, and um, peace out.